Hi, I'm Chris, this is Rail Focus. The high vis is on, so that can only mean one thing, and it's time for Rail Live. Rail Live is the yearly event held at the Longmaston Rail Innovation Centre just down the road from Stratford upon Avon. It brings together industry leaders, organisations, and companies. So basically, you've got anything from brand new rolling stock brought in by uh, train operating companies to road rail vehicles and hand tools. So you've got private companies who are trying to promote their products, but you've also got rail organisations who are trying to promote their services. So I'm with Nigel Harris, managing editor of Rail Magazine. Tell me about Rail Live in your own words in a few sentences. Well, it's unmissable, Chris. It's unmissable, of course. Um, it's it's a much bigger show this year. It is it is growing by the year. Yeah. You'll have seen yourself much more oh, yellow kit here, which is the the heart and soul of this show. But everything else that we build around it, we've got over 240 exhibitors. We had over 3,000 people on site yesterday. Well, that, yeah, well, busy. Um, so everything's busier. But you know the the reception that we're getting from visitors and exhibitors is really good they clearly love it and we want to give them more of that so yeah. we'll continue to do what we seem to be good at and find some new things to be good at as well <laughs> it's great well thank you for your time you're very welcome Fantastic. always good to see you keep you writing too. for us i will cheers. Right, cheers traditionally i'd usually come to rail live i think this is about my fourth or fifth visit now and i create two blogs about rail live and just basically take a look at the different things that are basically here i usually do rolling stock and infrastructure and engineering but as i'm trying to now push my youtube channel i thought i uh, video the show instead and just take a look around and see what's what and just basically show you uh, if whatever catches my eye this first video will be about rolling stock because there is quite a lot of rolling stock on display we're currently just about to board the revolution vlr so that's a very light rail vehicle designed for small branch lines which maybe wouldn't warrant a full-size heavy rail vehicle uh, but yeah we're going to be here a little bit more about it in a short while and we'll take a look at some of the other rolling stock the part two of this video will be about engineering and infrastructure and things like that I managed to record a full length interview with the head of external relations for Evershot Rail and I decided to upload that in full as a standalone video to which will be a link in the description but I thought for this video I'd just give you a real quick brief overview of the vehicle itself. The Revolution VLR is a new type of rail vehicle that's designed for branch lines but could also help to support the reopening of shorter lines. For the past year, the unit that was on display at Rail Live has been undergoing testing on a dedicated test track at the former Ironbridge power station. The 56 seater vehicle only weighs 24 tonnes, which is about 4% lighter than the equivalent Class 153 or a single DMU carriage. The vehicle that was on display at Rail Live was a diesel electric hybrid with both diesel engines and batteries, much like Transport for Wales's Class 230s, but it does actually have the potential to operate uh, with batteries alone in combination with a rapid charging system. The inside of the unit is very well put together and this is no prototype and considering it has a capacity of 56 seats within a relatively short unit it didn't feel cramped and it did seem that there's plenty of leg room for passengers. So a real quick brief overview of the uh, unit I think what I'll do is I'll let Tim Burley from Evershot Rail tell you more about it in the interview video that I mentioned previously. We've also got a very nice example of a class 69 here, which is a converted class 56. So they've basically put a Caterpillar engine, the same engine that's fitted in the class 66 into the unit to make it a little bit more environmentally friendly and to help cut down on the fuel bill as well. And it like extends the life of the unit as well. So it could be good for another 10 to 15, maybe even 20 years at a push because they are brand new engines as well. So it's just another way that the freight rail sector is trying to go a little bit greener because uh, obviously not a lot of the UK rail network is electrified, especially freight terminals and things like that. So diesel is going to be around for a long time. So if they can make it as green as possible, that can only be a good thing. And it really is an attractive looking unit in that green colour.
I'm currently on board uh, one of West Midlands Railway's new Class 196 diesel multiple units, which I've just been informed are hopefully going to be introduced in autumn this year. There has been a bit of delay to the introduction of these units, and it's not clear how many have been accepted by uh, West Midlands Railway at the minute. But uh, yeah, hopefully, fingers crossed, autumn these will be introduced. I've already done a video on the Class 197, which is part of the same Civity family from uh, CAF. So they are relatively similar. I think I said in that video they are almost identical, but I was corrected and these are actually quite different. These come in uh, two different varieties. So you've got 12 two car unit and 14 four car units. So you've got four car formations, uh, whereas Transport for Wales have opted for two car and three car formations. They look relatively similar. I've only been in a mock-up of the Transport for Wales units, but I think the seating is all very, familiar let's just have a quick uh, sit down in one of these seats here let's um well they are quite firm let's just uh, press that padding there it is yeah they quite upright and firm but i don't know the um yeah i probably probably not as firm as a class 700 which is the benchmark for chair stiffness i think but um yeah definitely definitely quite firm but then again they might because people say they uh, the chairs might soften eventually can't see any charging points, I don't think. There is indeed a socket, yeah, sorry. Yeah, there's a USB and a three pin plug down there. So there definitely is charging, but it is um, on the table seats, you'll see it's there. And then if you're sat in one of the airline seats, you'll see there is a charging point there. So you've got a three pin plug. Can I just angle that down a bit better? And I think there is USB charging there. So yeah, there is charging facilities, which is kind of an essential thing these days. So just before the rain comes down, I thought I'd try and get a little bit of an outside shot of the Class 196 and it's striking orange and purple livery. I'm still not 100% convinced on the on the colour scheme, but for a branding perspective, I guess it is, it's striking. And the purple's not too bad, it's just the, uh, the orange. Obviously, the orange doors actually is, you know, it's all part of being uh, accessible and things like that. So the, the colourful doors are needed, so, but yeah, it's just... Obviously, it's just a train. I don't know how far I can go up. I don't think I can go too far, but much like the 197s and the 195s, it's an engine per carriage. So, um, you know, if you've got a four car train, it's got 2,000 horsepower about. I think it's got a little bit more than 2,000 horsepower because they're slightly more powerful than the class 197, but they're still kind of uh, 100 mile per hour capable units, much like the 195 and the 197. Other than the length and the formation, there's not a huge difference between them. Actually, the interiors are a little bit different and things like that from operator to operator but yeah that's a, a class 196 like i said before hopefully being introduced in uh, autumn this year so i'm here with nick from evershot rail and we're going to talk briefly about the uh, swift uh, high speed rail high speed freight electric freight electric freight yeah. okay yeah. okay Sorry. would you like to tell me a little bit about it yeah, okay, so what we're doing is we're taking a 321 uh, electric multiple unit that was used to operate um, services in and out of London. Yeah. Um, it's now being replaced by newer trains, and so we've taken that vehicle, we've stripped all the seats out and luggage racks, and we're now using it for a fast electric freight. Yeah, so what sort of freight are you envisaging could be carried? I know you've got cages in there, so it could be anything from parcels to... Absolutely, we all know there's been a massive growth in the home delivery market. There's yeah. lots of uh, high street retailers and uh, large delivery companies that uh, obviously we see their lorries going up and down the motorways. We're looking at an opportunity to put that onto the railway. Network. Yeah, yeah. So, what sort of capacity? of these units got which each car let's say so uh, within a four car unit you can put 38 tons of goods yeah. um it's about equivalent to four road lorries right. um so it's about 240 odd square meters of four, four space um and these parcels are mostly mostly the air anyway yeah, yeah. You open the standard parcel you get at home it's, it's quite a lot of uh, packaging in within it so it's not really a weight issue it's no. more of a volume issue yeah um, so we retain the existing doors on the train and we've designed it so that it's easy to load things in and out yeah. and most of these operators have got their own sort of trolley systems so yeah. they, they put all the parcels into trolleys which get loaded onto their road lorries yeah. we're looking at making that as easy as possible for them to transition to that okay, okay. 
So what sort of kind of stations and facilities has this got the potential to serve? Can it, for, for example, fall into a, like a mainline station, a passenger station perhaps? Yeah, that, that's possible. You could use those types of stations. So we've got um, obviously an electric unit, so it needs to be a route that has got 25 kV electrification. Yeah. Um, although you could diesel haul it if you needed to. Um, I think with a lot of city centre stations, they're quite constrained. They obviously have issues around security of both vehicles vehicles so um, some of those places are a little bit more challenging um, but there's been a study done by Network Rail looking at the opportunity to yeah. use stations for this type of Yeah so something use. that's been studied. Yeah absolutely and they're looking at those sorts of options right. um, and then you've also got uh, freight terminals yeah. um, some of which are electrified but the vast majority are not yeah. um, and so for that we're developing what we call a battery shunt mode so yeah. it's going to be a relatively <laughs> small battery uh, but it's going to enable the train to be able to operate under its own power yeah. over short distances is yeah. at low speed just so they can get from the main line into a, a freight siding and then back out onto the main yeah, line. Yeah, so that'll be charged through the overhead. Yeah, units. that's the idea that yeah. um, when it's running in under overhead, it will charge the battery, and, and then when it gets to a particular location, you can swap mode and then the train will yeah. power so itself. So you've got kind of the space for like the DC conversion, things like that. There's yeah, absolutely. No, no constraints there. Yeah, absolutely. We're looking at putting it all within the motor vehicle because it makes it easier to, to yeah. fit. And one of the key things is to keep the cost down. Yeah. Um, so we're trying to use uh, commercial off the shelf equipment, yeah. sort of automotive type technology, but in the right way, in the way put for sort of rail use. Yeah. Okay, so uh, lastly, what sort of kind of routes are you thinking? Maybe Houston to Glasgow, that type of service, or you know, what sort of potential have we got? Yeah, so you'd have to talk to the operators themselves of yeah, what they're planning. Um, but yes, you've got the East Coast, West Coast main line. Um, so they're obviously quite strong candidates. What's been surprising is that actually quite short distances could become quite viable because oh, yeah. of the issues around low emission zones, mm -hmm. congestion in city centres. So when we started this project, we were thinking about those long distance journeys, but increasingly as <laughs> accustomed to talk about shorter distances, yeah. which could become quite viable. So for what's, what's 50 miles? 50 miles, 100 miles, yeah, yeah. in and out of city centres um, and, and distribution centres. So yeah, we've been talking to a number of different people about yeah. opportunities. So. Oh, great. That's fantastic. Well, thanks very much for speaking to me. Thank you, Chris. All right. Thank you very much. Now Swift aren't the only company trying to offer high speed logistics and freight. Orion, which you can see the vehicle behind me, is a class 768 and they're offering a similar sort of thing. So it's a high speed vehicle, 100 miles per hour uh, capable vehicle, which is powered via the overhead pantograph there. So it is capable of going on electrified lines as it's based on a class 319, but also has diesel engines fitted to it. So it's a bit like a set of class 769, I guess which again is another unit which is owned by Porterbrook. So these units are owned by Porterbrook. So it's kind of something they're looking to lease to freight companies, I guess, to uh, provide high speed freight logistics or relatively high speed, let's call it, because uh, 100 miles per hour for freight is quite fast. So yeah, the, the engines, I don't think there's so much to go off non-electrified lines, but they're more to get into freight terminals, which as I gather from speaking to a few people, getting kind of into them with electrified vehicles can be tricky because not all of the freight terminals are electrified. So they do need that propulsion like the Swift with the battery technology just to get that kind of last mile. But I'm guessing, because this appears to have two diesel engines like a 769, so I'm guessing this could go a little bit further off non-electrified lines if need be. Porterbrook have another unit on display which second iteration of their Hydroflex concept so this is more of a working model the one that I took a ride on in 2019 was just basically a prototype but this is actually kind of a production model as you call it and it's due to start mainline testing and complete that mainline testing this year and they're hoping potentially to get a customer for it although they wouldn't really say who but they're hoping to get a customer for it maybe towards the end of this year so it might actually run on rails this year potentially, which could be quite exciting. So yeah, it's a hydrogen train, powered completely by hydrogen. It does have batteries as well, but that's more to do with power delivery and things like that. But we'll talk a bit more about that in a second. Now the train is based on a class 319, so it is capable of traveling up to 100 miles per hour, but it has been capped at 90, which I guess isn't actually too bad for the lines that this is going to operate on. It does still have its uh, pantograph, so it could potentially travel on electrified lines and then use the hydrogen fuel cell for the non-electrified lines and I guess once you know if it's under uh, overhead power then it could travel up to 100 miles per hour but the actual fuel cells just to kind of give them that range basically it has been capped at 90 miles per hour which still isn't too bad 
So this front uh, driving motor car here has all of the tanks for the hydrogen and the control systems. It's got four 100 kilowatt fuel cells which top up a battery which is in one of the trailer cars actually. All of this stuff kind of underneath here, that's all the control systems and the fail safes. So you've got basically the hydrogen fuel cells are located kind of around here and then you've got the actual hydrogen tanks which should give them a range of up to uh, 300 miles but that's just the modelling so they're saying they could actually run 400 miles on those fuel cells cells with the, uh, the hydrogen that they have on board. As you know the battery is in the, uh, the driving motor vehicle. It is a 220 kilowatt battery so um, it's uh, so basically what happens is the hydrogen fuel cells they kind of work in a steady state and they just top up the batteries, trickle the batteries so when the driver comes to accelerate from a station the actual power delivery will come from that 220 kilowatt hour battery but I was told that the actual total power output of the vehicle could read 800 kilowatts so that if it's needed you know for rapid acceleration and stuff like that so there is that potential just for short bursts of 800 kilowatts but the actual battery itself 220 kilowatts and the four hydrogen fuel cells are 100 kilowatts so taking a look on board it does look pretty much like a standard class 319 the seats themselves the structure of the seats has been retained but these lovely actually really quite nice let's just sit down on one leather seats are uh, recycled leather and they're actually quite comfortable I, don't, I think they've got new padding in them but uh, actually yeah very nice so going with the kind of green theme with the hydrogen so they have you know keen to stress that all of the leather recycled I'm not sure how leather recycling works but you know they've, they've done it so that's pretty good they've got these uh, information displays here and obviously the LED lighting as well just to keep that uh, energy consumption as low as possible so it's got the uh, the 2 plus 3 which I'm not a huge fan on but fan of but I guess if you want to keep the capacity with the loss of that uh, power car for the control systems and the tanks then I guess uh, it's not too bad they are still a three car well from a passenger perspective they're a three car set so it's not too bad it actually looks quite smart you've got USB charging here as well so we've got all the mod cons that passengers expect and we've also got the capability of running 5G as well through the Wi-Fi and things like that so all providing passengers with uh, 5G connectivity so you've got the uh, information the emergency information there you can see from a passenger perspective it just it is a three car train with all the power systems the fuel cells and the fuel tanks within that uh, driving motor vehicle at the front so although this is beyond the prototype now it is a demonstrator vehicle it could go into operation if they find a customer for it but this was actually introduced at cop 26 so basically we've got this conference style seating here so you would have had kind of dignitaries and mps all coming to take a look at the hydrogen train uh, you've got all this again recycled plastics throughout so i think the chairs as well kind of using I know they're metal but using re uh, recycled materials so they just really wanted to stress kind of the green credentials of this train it's not just about the hydrogen it's about what's actually inside the train itself as well so yeah it's all really interesting it looks really you know it's not this is far beyond the prototype that I went on in 2019 this is a proper fully functioning and kitted out train and it's all looking pretty smart so that was just some of the rolling stock highlights from Ray Alive 2022 I couldn't get around absolutely everything there is here but uh, yeah there's just so much on display but hopefully I give you a little bit of a flavor of what's on display usually at Ray Alive events so I'm gonna leave it there for today hello. oh just be hello are you okay how are you doing Very well, enjoying you. your day at Ray Alive you have Taz what have you uh, anything in particular I really enjoyed uh, being shown around the trains uh, they've got various uh, trains here, the hydrogen trains are converted passenger to freight trains and there are people around to show you all the different details about it which have been yeah. lots of information, it's very interesting. Yeah it has, really good. So there we are, that's Rail Live. If you've, liked, if you've enjoyed this video please do hit that like button, consider subscribing but I'm going to leave it there for today as a truck goes past and say until next time, bye bye. Oh.